Hello, I am Professor Sims, and this is an introduction to the micro lab. This course is broken up into 10 lab sessions, not including this one. Each lab session has specific learning objectives. For this session, the intro module, the learning objectives are going to be becoming familiar with course expectations, resources, and information. We will discuss proper biosafety level two, safety rules and disposal procedures. During the scheduled lab session when we meet in class, students are gonna become familiar with the facility, including the locations of lab safety equipment and materials used for executing all of your lab procedures, and you'll be assigned into your groups in which you will be working throughout the semester. For the overall uh, course learning objectives. Uh, overall, for completing this course, okay, you're going to become competent in bright field microscopy, microbe cultivation, and uh, biochemical properties, microbial control methods, and uh, you are also going to learn how to identify an unknown microbial specimen. The micro lab is essentially a long form a supplemental instruction for the micro lecture course. I do teach an online micro lecture course. You can find my videos here on the YouTube channel. In the lab, students have the opportunities to participate in authentic, hands-on experiences. So you're going to be doing real science. Uh, you're going to be doing things like preparation of specimens, staining, culturing, isolating bacteria, performing identification tests on microbes. This is a challenging course. This is the step beyond a lecture where you're actually going to be applying knowledge that you should get from your lecture course. Microbiology itself is a challenging field and therefore this, this is a challenging course. It focuses on comprehension, not just memorization. You will be challenged to do your own research outside of class. You're going to have to learn how to effectively communicate scientific information, not just in your written lab reports, but also during in-class discussions and between you and your peers, your lab partners. The learning is self-directed, especially because it is designed to be a critical thinking, applied knowledge curriculum. Um, you're not just going to be learning about microbiology. You're going to be learning how to conduct scientific experiments how to observe phenomenon, how to interpret your results, how to draw conclusions. And you're also going to be learning a lot about your own learning style, which should help you in your career beyond this class. So for the resources, references, I have more references than this posted to the syllabus. You do not need to buy all of those books on the syllabus. They're just there so that you know where you can find more information. If you, the other three books besides these two that are listed on the syllabus, are they're actually in the library, the Franny Library, and I think a couple of them are even online. But one thing that you do need to buy, the lab manual, I've got it listed here as the customized version. The customized version just has exactly what is necessary for the course and nothing else. So if you did buy this entire lab manual, you do have everything you need. Um, you just have more than you need. The textbook is a free online OpenStax textbook. It was published in 2016. And here you, you can see the link where you can actually go and download this book. It's also posted to Moodle. This is the cover page. I'm just going to page down to the table of contents. And all of these chapter titles you see there in blue, those are actually hyperlinks. So you can click on a chapter title and it will jump right to that chapter. So that saves you a lot of scrolling. The course materials on Moodle, so we do actually use Moodle for this course quite a lot. So if you're not already on Moodle, or you're having any kind of technical issues, you're gonna to wanna to sort that out as soon as possible. Uh, please consult the syllabus, the course Moodle site for all of your course information, including the news forum, I use that a lot, syllabus, the course calendar is in the syllabus. You're going to want to go ahead and print out that calendar and keep it somewhere prominent because it has everything we're doing 
during every lab session, all of the reading assignments that you need to do before common, anything that's due, such as like lab reports or bonus assignments, all of that is in one place on one page. It's very, very useful to have that handy. Uh, also on Moodle are going to be your PowerPoint slides for all of these video presentations. The guidelines and grading rubrics for the lab reports, other writing resources, so your APA guidelines are on there, links to the writing center where you can make an appointment to get a tutoring session. You are going to want to do that because I give you bonus points for doing that. Um, all of the links for your quizzes, all of your bonus assignments, all of that stuff is on Moodle. So get, get, get very acquainted with Moodle if you're not already. The lab videos are on my YouTube channel, and here's the link for my YouTube channel. It's just youtube.com slash c slash Professor Sims. I want everybody to please remember that these presentations, these videos, are designed to supplement, not substitute for your reading assignments. The lab videos are there to help you to focus your studying, to guide and facilitate you. They are there to help you prepare for the quizzes. The quizzes happen online and they are due before you come to lab. They're open book and you get two chances, but there is a quiz before each lab session. It is designed to make sure that you're coming to lab fully prepared to perform the experiments. So make sure you can find those on Moodle. Moodle also has all the information you need for your quizzes, written assignments, any of that other stuff. All of your policies for grading, late assignments, missed exams, all of that's going to be in the syllabus. So again, make sure you read through the syllabus. I want to talk about getting the most of your time in the lab. This is necessary. I kind of want to pause and just chat with you guys a bit about what exactly is expected in the lab course. Some of you have never taken a wet lab. Some of you have taken labs, but they were like simulation labs, dry labs, which are very much similar to a lecture. This lab is not going to be similar to your lecture courses. You are going to be rather autonomous and you're going to be expected to know how to perform all of the lab procedures before you come to class. Absolutely. You should know what you're doing, how the experiments work, why they work the way they work, why they don't work sometimes, if there's any dangerous specimen or chemicals or any of that kind of stuff that you're going to be working with, you should know that in advance. So make sure you read all of your materials before coming to your lab session. Make sure you do come to all of the labs and come on time because sometimes for safety reasons, the doors do have to be locked and you want to make sure that you get there before that happens because once the door is locked, it stays locked. If you're worried about not being able to remember the steps and everything, don't, don't worry about that because I do provide you with a step-by-step -step lab procedure. It is on the Moodle modules. Each lab has its own module on Moodle and they all have the lab procedure right there. You can print it out, bring it to class. You do want to make sure that you have studied that beforehand, of course. And you want to read your lab procedure before coming, but obviously it's there for you during class if you need it. Uh, you want to make sure you're recording all of your results, all your observations. If you're having trouble with that, you can print the results section of the report template. So I put on Moodle the templates that you use for all of your lab reports. They are templates that you complete. You just fill in the blank. And so if you're worried about not maybe knowing what all results you need to record, especially early in the semester, then you can actually bring the template with you. You just want to make sure that you're taking advantage of the time that you have in the lab and, and asking lots of questions, participating in discussions, Q&A sessions, your instructor, whether it's me or it's someone else, will be there to demonstrate the procedures to you, to answer any questions that you have, to help you find things if you're not sure where things are, to help you interpret your results. But that's exactly what it is, is they're there to help you. They're there to facilitate and guide you. This is absolutely not going to be a class where you sit and soak in information. It's very much active learning. A laboratory to a scientist is what a recording studio is to a musician. A musician does not go to the recording studio to learn how to play their instrument. A musician does not go to the recording studio to learn how to read music. You go to the recording studio to record your music. Maybe you do some editing, mix the tracks. It's very much like that for a scientist in a laboratory. 
the scientist is preparing themselves before they get to the lab. They know what they're going to be doing pretty much. They sort of expect certain results. You're not coming in with a blank slate and figuring everything out on the fly. No, absolutely not. Come to the lab prepared and utilize the expertise of people around you. You know, some people may know better than you how to culture or something. Maybe they already work in a clinical lab or a medical science lab. Maybe they're experienced with using microscopes. You never know. Talk to your lab partners, talk to your instructor, ask lots of questions, and come prepared to work. Um, as for getting the most out of your study time outside of lab, I do highly recommend the techniques here. These are scientifically proven techniques. These on the left have been proven to help with retention, formation of long-term memory rather than short-term memory. The problem with the, these methods on the right, which is what most people do, they reread, they rewrite, they, these things are extremely time-consuming. And you're not retaining nearly as much as you think you might be. In order to really understand scientific concepts, you have to do more than remember them. You have to connect the dots. When you're rewriting things, you want to rewrite things in your own words. Explain them to yourself. Talk about them and think about them as if you were trying to teach something to someone else. Quiz yourself. And by this, I mean literally go into the material. Think about what kinds of questions might be asked on an exam. Write them down and then answer them. That's one of the very best ways to learn especially when you're learning for comprehension and critical thinking. Um, you want to be able to tie new information to old information, things that you've already gone over. And that's especially going to be important for this class because everything builds upon stuff that you've already learned. So when you learn in lab three how to do a wet mount, and you learn in lab four how to do a dry mount, and then you learn in lab five how to do a uh, flagella stain, like all of these things are connected and related. And interleaving, this is an important concept because what it is, is it's giving your brain time and space to form those long-term memories. You want to take breaks, right? You study for 20, 30 minutes, and then you do something else, and then you come back to it. You also can switch up which subjects you're studying or switch up which environments you're studying in. What you don't want to do is have a huge, long block of study time where for four hours you're studying gram stains. Your brain is not going to retain that information in any meaningful way. For the safety rules, I am going to go through a lot of this in great detail in class. I'm just going to skim through it here. But I want to make sure that you know that it is extremely important that you're following proper safety procedures in the lab. Because we do work with human pathogens, including things like strep, staph, pseudomonas, pneumonia, nasty bugs. If you are not following proper safety guidelines, you can be asked to leave the lab session. And if you have multiple instances of breaking the safety rules, then you can be expelled from the course. And it's not that I'm trying to be mean, it's I got to keep everyone safe. You're not allowed to have any phones laptops, tablets, smartwatches, any personal electronics, leave them outside or keep them in your book bag, but you can't have them out in the lab. And the problem with personal electronics is that they can't be decontaminated without destroying them. So you can't, you don't want to bring them into the dirty lab. You are responsible for obtaining a lab coat and safety glasses. Safety glasses have to have side guards and they have to be made of unbreakable plastic. You do not have to spend a lot of money on these. Some of these safety glasses here, you can find them at Home Depot for two, three dollars. Uh, your lab coats have to have long sleeves and they have to cover your whole torso. They don't have to go down to your knees. They can stop at the waist if you want. If you want the shorter one, that's fine. But they do have to close and they have to close using either buttons or snaps. Hooks are even okay, but no zippers. You have to have your lab coat on and closed before you come into the lab. And you also want to make sure that you're wearing long pants that cover your whole leg, closed toed shoes that are covering your whole foot, no open toes, no open heels, no high heels. You don't want to have jewelry that's hanging off of you. You want to cut your fingernails if they're super long. And if your hair is long, then you need to tie it back or put it up. If you have any cuts, especially on your hands, 
let me know before we start any experiments because I can get you a bandage to cover them up. Obviously, you're not bringing any food or drinks. You're not smoking in the lab. I'll show you where to put your, your book bags and purses and things. And I will also show you how to disinfect, uh, proper way to wash your hands, all that stuff. And I will go over in, in great detail uh, where to dispose of things, where the fire, or fire extinguishers are located, the eyewash, all that stuff when we meet in class. Go through the syllabus. Come to class if you have any questions about anything. The full version of the safety rules and disposal procedures is going to be on the Moodle site. Make sure you read through those. And if you have the lab manual, also read uh, pages one through six in the lab manual. There's a lot of repetition there, so it's okay if you haven't gotten your lab manual yet. You should have it ordered though, so hopefully you have it ordered. And you do need to take the safety quiz before you can do any experiments. So we don't start doing experiments until the lab one session, which is actually the second time we meet. So you have some time. Uh, you have to take the safety quiz, have your lab coat and your safety glasses before you can do any experiments. So you do have a little bit of time to do that. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to do the reading. Check the description, this video's description for uh, other videos that are related to the topics that we covered and leave your questions for me in the comments below.